today um, I'm going to be covering how to do vector input with StyleGAN. First I'm going to give a little uh, intro of what vector input actually means in terms of like the latent space of a model. Um, and then we'll go into Runway and show you guys how to actually do it within the Runway UI. So first off, um, there's a thing called a latent space. Most machine learning models have a thing called a latent space. And what that is, it's, it's just like a, a vector space with different points that correspond to different things. Here in the case of the Stalgan model that has been trained on faces and generates faces, um, one particular vector or point here in this latent space will correspond to this particular output image. And different points will correspond to different images. One nice property about the latent space is that points that are close to each other will generate similar images. So here you can see they're like pretty similar images. There's a little bit of hair that's gone. Um, slight differences. Um, because the latent space in a Stalgan model is smooth, um, you can do what's called a latent walk or a smooth linear interpolation between these two points. So it's taking like this start image and then smoothly moving all the way through all the intermediate points to the final image. So, sort of a little bit to break your bubble, we were just talking about this two-dimensional latent space. Um, Stalgan actually uses a latent space that is 512 dimensions, which is really hard for humans to conceive of. Um, but yeah, one nice thing Runway does to make it convenient for us in their UI is they use an algorithm to take this 512 dimensional space and project it down to two dimensions into a 2D grid, a 2D image grid um, that we can select points from. And uh, it's flattened or projected down in such a way that um, the distances between points uh, still correspond. So two images that are close to each other in the 2D grid should be close together um, when they're back up in their 512 dimensional latent space. Cool, and with that, we will open up Runway and get started. So we are here in Runway, and we're gonna pick a model which uses vector input. Um, all the Stalgan models will take vector as an input. Um, here, let's scroll down and pick one. These clouds look good. We can click learn more to learn more about them. Um, this is the person who published this model. Um, there's not too much description here. These will link the GitHub and research paper generally when, when you're within the Stalgian, um, like category. Uh, we'll all link to the original NVIDIA Stalgian paper. Um, we can check out the gallery tab. These are images it's generated, the license, Creative Commons. And yeah, let's go and put this in a workspace and get playing with it. Here you can see that it takes vector as an input. It only takes vector as an input source. Um, let's click vector, run our model, run mo remotely. This is, uh, this is a little bit notable in this model you can choose between two different checkpoints of the model. Um, just different like iterations of the same model. Uh, one earlier on in the training process at step 1000 and one a little later at step 2000. And these will just produce like slightly different, uh, slightly different looking clouds um, depending on what you prefer. And yeah, this is going to take a little while to load. Um, we can wait. Um, I probably waited maybe like 10 seconds. I also needed to stop and start just to like restart it. Um, maybe there's like a little hang up or bug. But yeah, here we are. This grid at the top will be how you select your vector input. This 2D grid is what I was just describing with how Runway takes the 512 dimensional space vector space of Stalgan and flattens it down to this nice 2D grid that we can explore like in, an, in a very easy way. Yeah, lots of nice, pretty looking clouds. 
So points that are close together in this grid will be similar clouds, and then if you like go really, really far away, you'll probably get different clouds. And one thing you can do is if you want to find a more diverse set of clouds, you can increase the sampling distance, like crank it all the way up. And what that will do is for each like step, like from this square to that square, it'll have a greater distance in the higher latent space. So what that means is like, uh, you know, it'll just vary more from picture to picture. So what I generally do is uh, I have a high sampling distance and then I find an image that I really like and then I really like this one. This one has nice colors and then I can decrease the sampling distance or I like this one too. And I can decrease the sampling distance and then find around it a lot of images that are very similar to it but like slightly different in case I want to like fine tune or tweak uh, what I have in my image. As you can see, they're like all very, very similar, but slightly different. This other option here, truncation, this is a value that, that determines how realistic the output image is. If you have a really high truncation value, you should be producing images that are like a little more like out there and crazy. You might get stronger artifacts and more like bright colors that are sort of unrealistic. If you have a low truncation value, usually 0.8 or lower, anything along this spectrum should look more realistic and look more like real clouds from the real training data set. Once you've found an image you like, this is how you save it. You just click save image, it'll save it locally. Um, one other thing you can do if you want to be able to save out this particular vector, you can click this. Save vector, it'll save what's called what's called a JSON file. It's literally just like an array of 512 numbers, which represents that 512 dimensional vector. And later on, you can come into Runway and upload that vector if you want to reproduce the same image. There's this exports tab. It actually uh, gives you a lot less control over the vectors than in the previous UI. Um, but here, you can generate images. This is uh, set at 500 images to generate, but you can slide it around. But this, like as it is right now, will pick 81 random images, random vectors, and just give them to you, the output images. And you can select one truncation value that will be the same across all, all, all of those images. So you have less control. You can't say like, I want this vector. Um, yeah. Also, you can generate a latent walk video. You also here do not have the option to pick a specific vector like you do in the grid. This number of keyframes is like how many, how many images you want it to produce. So this will pick five random vectors and then give you a smooth interpolation between them. And so that is exports. If you have any questions, drop me and Derek a comment. Join our Slack workspace. We're happy to guide you guys through this process of machine learning.